Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to paint the Monarch Life Cycle. We're going to be using watercolor paints and as we go along I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about Monarch Butterflies. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. I'm in California and we have tons of them here. The population was actually declining pretty bad. But recently, more people have been planting milkweed, which is the only plant that they eat. And so more have been being born and flying around. And it's awesome because we need them. <laughs> but I won't go too far into that. Um, but I will tell you a little bit of why I was inspired to do this. I started raising, I use like quotation marks around that, butterflies last year. And it was such a crazy experience. I like... I can't even tell you guys how crazy of an experience it is. I never knew how much milkweed one caterpillar could eat. They basically eat an entire plant before they turn into a chrysalis and then a butterfly. Um, but if you guys want to hear more about that, go to my Instagram, lavender at lavender and see, and go to my highlights. And I have a whole highlight on the butterflies and my whole experience last year, my experience this year has been really good. I just released seven healthy butterflies. And it's just, it's just such a cool thing to see them go from a tiny little egg to a caterpillar to the chrysalis and then to the beautiful butterfly. So that's what we're going to focus on today and we are going to paint that. So the first thing, you'll need a couple supplies. You'll need watercolors. I have a palette here. I also am using several different size brushes. You should be good if you have a size six or four. And then something smaller like a two or a zero for fine details. So a, a medium sized brush and a small one. I really love the pigeon letters. <clears throat> Cruelty free brushes, they're fantastic. I use them for everything. And then I have two water cups because I like to keep my cool colors and my warm colors separated. That way you don't end up having really murky colors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you're also going to need a pencil and an eraser and something that is circular unless you're really good at drawing circles. Today I'm going to use this big bowl <laughs> and depending on what size paper you have you can do a smaller circle but I'm just lightly tracing around the bowl to make a perfect circle. Here we are. Mine is super super light um, because I don't want I don't want to see my pencil lines but um, yours should be light too. What we're going to do is there's four, four little parts of the cycle of a monarch life cycle. The first one is that they're born or the mom, <laughs> the mom monarch butterfly lays the tiniest little egg. It's the size of a needle head. It is so small, but we're going to blow it up a little bit because we want to be able to see it. So what we're going to do is actually draw a leaf. So this is kind of like a long thin leaf because they, the monarch butterflies lay their egg on the opposite side of the leaf. So underneath it, and it's just this tiny little white egg. So you're going to just draw it like that. And then just because, you know, we're doing watercolor and I don't like typically use white paint, although we are going to use a little bit of it today, I'm going to put another leaf right behind it so that we can paint around that white egg. This is the first part of the monarch life cycle. The leaf with a tiny little egg underneath and they lay a ton of eggs. So if you wanted to put another egg, you can totally do that too. But we're just gonna keep it simple today. So that's the first step. Then we are going to have a caterpillar. Now we're moving on to the monarch caterpillar and I'm going to draw just a little darker so you guys can see it, but tradition or normally I like to keep my lines really light so that the watercolor artwork doesn't, um, or the lines don't show through the watercolor artwork. So they're kind of this long fat cylinder, <laughs> I guess you could say we're painting or we're going to draw the caterpillar now. And it's this long cylinder shape. They actually go through five cycles of, of um, different sizes and they shed their skin every time, but we're gonna draw basically at the biggest size so you can see. And I'm just gonna put a leaf underneath. And they have these like 
obviously a round head and then these little teeny legs, <laughs> almost like a little triangle. And in the back, so they're kind of sharper up front and then towards the back, they're just these little rectangle kind of shapes. And then they have these little antennas and they have them in the back too. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell <laughs> what the, the front is and what the back is. And then they have these stripes and we're not going to get really crazy with these today, but the stripes are yellow, black, and white. And that's important to know when you're identify, identifying a monarch butterfly caterpillar. And we can, obviously, when we start painting, we're going to add a lot more details. But it's good to lay out the lines. Um, if you guys pull up a caterpillar on your phone or your computer, however you're looking at images, I recommend doing that because... It's not just like straight lines. They're kind of these little jagged um, pattern. Okay, and we're gonna do just like a little kind of arrow going this way. And we can work on those later. Now we are moving on to the chrysalis. So the chrysalis is once this um, caterpillar is done eating, it is going to turn into this green thing and it's, insane like look at a youtube video of them turning into a chrysalis because they literally split open and the green inside of them comes outside and there's like a butterfly in there somewhere <laughs> but what they do is they turn into kind of like a j shape and they have a little it's called a silk pad and it attaches either to a branch i mean they'll attach to anything and then they stay there for about 14 to 16 days while they're becoming a butterfly. So here, I'm just gonna make maybe a little branch coming out and a little leaf and then just attach it. And I encourage you guys to pull up a chrysalis on your phone. And there's kind of the shape. And then it has this line right here that you're gonna see it's black and then gold, and then it has three little gold dots. Um, we're gonna, obviously we're using watercolors, so these are gonna be yellow. And then there's kind of some lines up here. The really cool thing is this eventually turns completely clear and then the butterfly comes out. Okay, so we have that part, and then the last part is a beautiful monarch butterfly which is going to probably take a little bit longer to draw than the other things that we just did here. So pull up a picture of a monarch butterfly. Make sure it's a monarch butterfly because they have very unique markings. And I'm make, I am painting one that is just kind of flat. I'm sorry, drawing one. And they have just a little head and then <clears throat> their body is like a cylinder and then the wings come out here and then they have another wing here if you hear a barking that is my dog i'm trying to make sure she doesn't bark but she's a corgi so she barks at everything <laughs> And then they have these little antennas and they have a lot of white spots and we'll get into that. We're actually, typically what I like to do is paint around, but there's so many white spots that I'm gonna bring in a white paint today. You can either use a gouache or a white watercolor paint and just marking off where the black lines are. There's definitely some details here because there's um, these veins that are coming through. And you guys, of course, can follow along with me. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just having fun here. <laughs> and then the same thing down here. 
and then the veins again. An interesting thing about butterflies to tell whether it's a male or a female is the females have thicker veins and the males have thinner veins and then the males also have the this little dot right here and on this side so i'm the photo i'm looking at is a male butterfly so i'm going to follow along and put that little dot it's pretty cool to be able to identify them and they have more, like a good portion up here of their wing is black. And then they have those little veins again. All right, I'm having a hard time with this. <laughs> okay, there we are. Now we can start painting, and what I like to do, I don't recommend putting your paints on top of your watercolor, but <laughs> I am going to do it right now just so that you guys can see. What I recommend doing is mixing up your colors first, and the colors we're going to be using is for the milkweed, it's kind of a brownish, greenish leaf. So get um, some green that's a little bit more neutral. This is, so there's tons of different kinds of milkweed, but the ones that are native to Southern California, they have a brownish kind of red tint to them. So we are going to mix up a color like that. And they are a little darker. There is tropical milkweed. It's not native to here, but I bought it last year, and oh my gosh, the caterpillars went crazy. They would only eat that one, which isn't good because you want them to eat the native plants because then it supports the whole ecosystem, but they freaking love that stuff, and it was bright green. It's really pretty, and it has yellow flowers. <laughs> Maybe they like it because it's prettier. <laughs> okay, so we have that green, and then we're also going to need black for the caterpillar so just make sure your black is is ready to go i like to call this waking up my paints so just adding water to them we're definitely going to be using a lot of black because there's a lot on the um the butterfly and then for the caterpillar we're also going to need yellow and there is white, and we're just gonna paint around the white sections on this one. Oops, I mixed my color wrong. My yellow is just a little too green, so I'm gonna come over and use this yellow here. Okay, there we go. We're also going to need orange. I have a really bright orange here. So let's see, we have orange, yellow, green. Oh, for the chrysalis, we're going to wanna to make a pretty bright green with more yellow tones in it. So make sure to have a green that's like that. And if it just looks way too bright for you, this is reminding me of that Jim Carrey movie, The Mask. <laughs> Everybody is probably too young for that reference. <laughs> But if it gets too bright like this, just add its opposing color. So if you just add a little tiny bit of red, that was probably a little too much. Oh, no, that looks good. It'll mute it down a little bit. You can do the same thing by adding black, but I find that using the opposing color just gives you better color. The black just mutes it in kind of a muddy way, in my opinion. Okay. So let's get started. We're gonna start at the top and move all the way around. If you are left-handed, oh, I think you'll be fine too. Okay, so the first thing is painting these leaves. And the way I like to paint, if you guys haven't painted with me before, I like to use, a, I use both wet on dry and wet on wet techniques, but I like to usually outline. And then I like to rinse off my brush dab it on a paper towel just to get the excess off, and then just come in here and kind of move the paint around. 
And since this leaf is wet and I don't want them to really bleed together, I'm actually, we could paint the bottom one right now and then we can come in and put another layer so there's some variation because they will bleed together, but it's okay as long as we, as we show, you know, we're gonna go in and paint a darker layer later. So make sure you paint around that little tiny egg, teeny tiny. All right, and then moving on to our caterpillar. <clears throat> you might wanna pull up a photo again, just so it's easier to know what to paint. chunky okay so we're going to switch to our smaller brush I'm actually gonna go pretty small here I'm going with my three over zero and I'm coming in and just making those yellow lines and make sure you're leaving a little bit of white because if you're looking at a photo you can see that there's gonna be white yellow, and black. We're not going for perfection today, just exploring this. <laughs> We're just going on an adventure. Caterpillars eat so much. I was amazed at how much they can eat. <laughs> it's such a cool process. I mean, just wow, it's just fascinating. Because the yellow is wet, we don't wanna come in here and start doing the black lines, so we're gonna let that dry, but we can paint the leaf underneath. And again, it's that milkweed leaf, and we're doing the native color, which is kind of that muted green. Just painting. We're gonna add layers to this. So this base layer is just a solid color. All right, and that guy. Then we're coming down to the chrysalis. We are going to have a milkweed leaf on top. because technically the chrysalis is hanging from that leaf, although that wouldn't be strong enough probably. So usually they like to hang on to branches or have, <laughs> I'm in the group on Facebook and some of them hang on to statues or the sides of walls. It's pretty cool. We're going to, <clears throat> going to grab that lighter green, that yellowy green and we're just gonna paint a base here. Now remember, there's that yellow line. It's technically gold and it's shiny, but just leave a space for that. And same thing with these little circles down here. We're, gonna, we're going to want to make them like a goldish color. We're just putting a light wash. Okay, maybe we should have painted in the opposite direction. I think if you're left-handed, this probably worked out good. But if you're right-handed, now you might put your hand in this. But just rotate your paper. Make sure you're filling this all in. Now, while this is wet, something that you can do to add a little depth is grabbing maybe just a slightly darker color and just punching it in a little bit on the bottom. And it'll kind of bleed and show you where the shadow is going to be here. All right. Now on to our butterfly. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. I'm gonna go back to a larger brush and because black is so much darker than all of the colors, 
we can just paint over those lines, those veins, because we're gonna come back later and, and paint over it with the black. So we're just taking our orange and painting where these, the orange part is. And to make this more interesting, maybe grab a little bit of a yellowy orange and just add a couple little dots in. And then maybe over here I have yellow and then I'll come in with the orange. It's just a way to add some variation to your painting. And then if I just tap, tap, tap. And that was a lot. If you ever need to pick up paint that you already put on the paper, rinse off your brush, then dry it off in a paper towel, and you can just come in here and press down, and your brush will soak up the paint. Great, and down here too. And we don't want it to bleed, so we're gonna have to come back when we, once it's dry to do the, the black veins and the black around the outside of the wings and the black in the center. Just adding a little bit of darker, just lightly tapping it in. Okay, now we're coming back up to the leaves and they're dry, so we're gonna add a darker color underneath on that secondary leaf. And I'm just going to make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush and outlining. I'm rinsing off my brush and just adding water to help it Soften that edge. Maybe dabbing in a little more color. And we'll also want to add some depth to that leaf, but we have to wait until this one dries first. And I might get just a slightly darker color just so that there's a, so you can really see that there's a shadow here. Here we go. All right, moving on to our caterpillar. We are going to pick up our smaller brush. Well, let's make, actually, okay, yeah. <laughs> smaller brush, and we're going to get the black. And we're going to start doing all those little details. So make sure you have a picture in front of you. So there's lines and the black lines touch the yellow, but make sure you're leaving space for white lines as well. And you can put in his little um, antennas. He has them over here too. It's such a I know I said this last time we were painting this, but it's a fascinating process watching them grow. And it also is kind of a good life lesson just to remember that things take time. And, you know, the little caterpillar probably doesn't know that he's going to be this amazing butterfly. And it's probably painful what he's going through, but he's, or she, whatever it is, is changing into something so amazing and so beautiful and something that, you know, nobody would have ever expected from this fat little caterpillar that eats all the milkweed. <laughs> but it just, I don't know, I think it's encouraging, you know, if you're, when you're going along life and you're trying to do something and it just seems impossible, there's so many examples of that in nature where things seem impossible and like they happen. 
And I just think it's nice to think about those things. So as you can see, I'm leaving little spaces of white. There's definitely a pattern to this, but I just chose to do it kind of messily. But nature is very like cyclical and patterned and nothing is really random, which is cool. But if you guys are the kind of person where that bothers you, you can totally like take your time with this and do the exact pattern that's on the Monarch uh, Caterpillar. But I wanted to make this a tutorial that didn't take three hours. <laughs> All right. So he's looking pretty good. We're going to wait to come back to do that bottom leaf. And if you want to, you can come in and add like a little darker yellow if you think that he needs it in some spots. It adds a little more interest. And the bottom of them is kind of darker or looks like it's almost all black. It is kind of if you flip them over. I mean, I try not to flip them over because I don't want to mess with them too much. But I have seen them on their backs and the bottom is darker. So you can, you know, paint a darker line underneath. Okay. I think that looks good. Now we're moving on to the chrysalis and I'm going to bring up a picture really quick because I can't remember a hundred percent what they look like. Okay. Let's start by painting our leaf, just making it a little bit darker on the bottom. So we have a little shadow. I'm just adding in water here. Kind of grab a little bit darker and just lightly touch it and it kind of just bleeds. I'm using oh, what watercolor paper? Oh, Lesion watercolor paper. It's really nice. I love it. It's really cottony. But when you do the wet on wet technique, it bleeds in really well. So this is going to be a little bit darker. We're just going to add because technically it would be shadowed by this leaf up here. So just kind of adding that in. Remember that we're gonna have a yellow line right here, so make sure to leave that white. And I'm actually gonna make it a little bit darker. Nice. And this side is light is like showing up a little bit lighter. And we'll come in and add the final details next. We can do the bottom of this leaf right now because that's not too wet. So I'm just painting dark line, dark green, rinsing off my brush grabbing just water, not too much water, and then just kind of almost like a circular motion, moving that water around. And technically there would be a darker shadow right here because the caterpillar is covering up this part of the leaf. So you could add a little darker shadow. Nice. Okay, now we're moving on. Oh, we could add a little bit more to this leaf up here. So we don't want it to be this dark because this leaf is on top. So grab a green that's a little bit lighter and do that same technique. Rinse off your brush, grab just water, and then just lightly kind of push it around. You can add a little bit more if you feel like it needs it. 
And maybe we add just a little bit of that brighter green to show that there might be some sun hitting this right here. Okay, now to our butterfly, we're gonna have to bring in all of the black. And like I said, we're not gonna worry about painting around the little dots. We are just going to paint black and then we can come back and I have some gouache that's white and that's what I'm gonna use for that. So to keep things in, oh, you know what? We forgot. So these are supposed to be orange. So I'm just going to paint around those and then we can add the orange later. So we're coming in with the black and it doesn't have to be super saturated. You can make it a little bit more watered down. I think it looks kind of interesting when you have some sections that are, you know, really saturated and some sections that are not. It also looks like the orange might not be completely dry, but that's okay. I mean, it shouldn't be bleeding like crazy into it, but if it's bleeding a little bit, it's okay. And then maybe, you know, over here, you make it a little more darker, more saturated black. Another tip too, is if you want more variations in your paintings and you have to use black, mix up your own black color. So what you would do is use like a burnt sienna with a Prussian blue. And if you mix the right quantities, it will turn, turn black. But you get more variations like when I'm painting a black animal that's what I do instead of just using black because you won't be able to get a lot of um, like shadows it just looks really flat when you do that but for this because we have this bright orange in the middle it's okay to stick with just a regular black and then painting the center section forget what this is called. Thorax? That sounds weird. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I'm grabbing a smaller brush and painting these little antennas. So when butterflies first come out of the chrysalis, they usually take about like a couple hours because they come out really tiny and scrunched up and they have to let all the blood or whatever they have go into their wings. And it takes a while. It's pretty, it's really cool to see. Okay, we need this to dry just a little bit because we need to be able to add the orange here. But we can do the veins. And for the veins, I am going to go more saturated black. And I'm just going to put those in here. They're bleeding a little bit because um, the orange is not completely dry yet. But that's okay. Just kind of putting these veins in here. I'm gonna do this one over here. You do, you don't want to use fully saturated because then it kind of looks weird against this one. So I'm gonna come back in and make those darker. But um, what where did I go wrong here? Oh, I messed up. So what you could do is do that technique. I can kind of move it around, rinse my brush, dry my brush, and then I can pull up the paint a little bit. But it's not gonna be perfect. I don't know why this is like mind boggling me right now. <laughs> that's okay. You know what, it's not perfect and that's fine. <laughs> okay. Then we have these here, and remember our little dots because this is a male butterfly. The male butterflies can get territorial, so when I release them, I put them, like I'll take them for a walk and then release them because 
if there's already a male that is in my neighbor or like within, I don't know how far they travel, but they'll like come after them. It's pretty crazy. All right, put those. And I wanna add, just make this a little bit darker because it's looking too gray. And they're not gray, they're black. Same thing over here. Last year, I bought so much milkweed. I was joking that they were, the caterpillars are putting me out of, on like the streets because of how much freaking stuff I had to buy them. It was insane. I just had to stop. I'm like, ugh. It made me feel sad, but I mean, it happens in nature. Some of them, the what the female um, monarchs do is they lay so many eggs. There's just no way that they, that one milkweed plant could support all that. And, you know, humans are interjecting like me last year and making sure they had enough milkweed. And yeah, it helps the population, but it it kind of interferes with nature in a way. So this year... What I did was, as soon as I saw eggs on the milkweed, I put a net over it so they couldn't lay anymore, um, and that seemed to help. But again, I am kind of playing God a little bit <laughs> with it. Now what we want to, so everything's done except we have to add in the white here, and then we have to come back and put orange, but this is too wet to paint right now. So let's do some little cute arrows coming along. I think a color that might look good here, we have a lot of green and we have a lot of orange here, maybe adding in a blue. You guys can add in whatever color you want. I am using, I think this is indigo. It's pretty dark blue, but I'm just gonna put, you know what? Maybe instead of an arrow, do like little dots. I think that'll look cute. So little dots. And you should still have that perfect circle pencil line underneath so you know what to do. And also feel free if you guys want to, I'm gonna come over here just cause I don't wanna put my hand in my painting. If you wanna label these for each life cycle, that would be really cool. So this is the egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. Really cool process. I hope you guys like this tutorial. I think it's really fun to learn about nature and art at the same time. I do have a beginner watercolor course on Skillshare. If you're interested in that, I know this wasn't huge on teaching you how to paint with watercolor today. It was more of a kind of an intermediate level because I'm not really teaching you how to do either of them. I mean, I'm showing, you're like following along, but you'd have to have a basic knowledge of watercolor painting first probably. So, Okay, maybe put one more dot up here. And let's see, how are we doing? We could probably put the orange in. It might bleed a little bit, but for time purposes, it's okay. Oh yeah, it's bleeding a little bit. So maybe something that we can do in the middle here is life cycle of a monarch. You know what? No, I'm not going to do that just for time purposes. <laughs> so I am going to grab my white ink and we're going to come in and do all of those beautiful little dots that the monarch butterfly has. 
and I have a really small brush and I like to use, if you guys have a white gouache, that's fine. If you have a white paint pen, that would be great. Just make sure this is completely dry before you go in with the white paint pen. But I like to use Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I started using this as calligraphy ink, um, but it smears like crazy because it's not waterproof. So now I like to use it in my paintings. Now you're just coming in here and making some little markings. Now the markings are very specific to a monarch, so I definitely recommend pulling up a photo of them. I'm doing the best that I can to follow along with the photo that I have in front of me, but um, again, we're just having fun, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. But there's all of these little tiny dots. They don't go inward here. They stay along the outside edges of the butterfly wings. Something else that you can do to kind of add a little variation here is you can put a little highlight Sometimes that just adds a little bit to your painting if you want to do that. I need to grab some more of this. There's also little dots on the head of the butterfly. And then coming along here, there's also these thin lines on its backside. I don't know what you'd call that. <laughs> And then same thing up here. Really, really beautiful creature. So every year they migrate around here to a place that's about six hours north on the central coast. My husband and I and our dog like to go camping there, but they, they call it overwintering and they stay in the trees over winter. They just like huddle up in the trees. I've never been there when that's happened, but I can't wait. One day I'm gonna do it, it's gonna be so cool. Okay. And again, you know, you could keep playing with this if you wanna add more little highlights in here, or if you wanna add maybe some darker orange. I need to fix that right there because that doesn't really look good. So I'm going to add just a little bit darker orange. It's good to have some variations in here because it, it shows kind of where the light's hitting. And then I am going to add just a little more black to the center of its body. Just maybe on the left hand side as a little shadow. Oh, almost forgot our chrysalis. So remember that part that was kind of golden color? Try to mix up a color that's similar to gold, maybe a little bit of orange and yellow. And then it's just this really thin line here. And then you have these three little dots. It literally looks gold when you look at the, the chrysalis in real life. It is so cool. And then there's a little tiny black line here and then there's also oops there's also the stem that attaches I think this is called like cream master or something it's some weird name like that that attaches it to the leaf and then there's a silk pad under here the caterpillar actually spins up the silk that attaches it it's like glue that keeps it up there and then just grab a, a green that's a little bit darker and you're going to make these tiny little lines right here because they are there are some tiny little lines and if you feel like they look kind of weird just get a little bit of water and you can kind of like blend it in on one side and there you go that is the life cycle of a monarch if you guys could please share your artwork, I love to see it. Tag me on Instagram at Lavender and C. I would love to see what you create. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you enjoyed learning about the beautiful monarch butterfly.